Hey, what's up, people? This is Sif Furian, and right now we're going to be jumping into episode four of season four of Banshee. We are hot on the heels of the last episode, and last time we finally saved Job. Uh, we made a bit of a deal in exchange. Went a bit betty up, not going to lie, but Job is now safe and sound. Hopefully, we'll find out where that guy is and we can track him down, but that's, that's some later thing. For now... I think Joe just needs some time to kind of like mentally and emotionally recover. And, you know, yeah, he, he needs some time, man. But the other big kind of takeaway from the last episode is we found out that Rebecca was pregnant uh, with Hood's baby when she died. So, of course, Brock came and arrested Hood, you know, as like murder suspect number one with the blood in the back of the car and, and everything. Uh, but as the episode ended, we saw a girl, I guess, being kidnapped and stuff by, by who the real serial killer is so of course now if another body turns up it can't be hood if if hood was locked up you know so man i'm just really eager to get into this next episode man um but yeah if you're interested in watching the next two episodes they should be up on my patreon right now including all the full lengths for this whole entire season are up links are all going to be all down below but for now <sighs> let's do this man Everything was delicious, sweetie. Thanks, baby. So, how was work? Slow and painful, same as always. Except for when I got promoted to shift supervisor. I knew it. We need to celebrate. Do you have anything in mind? As a matter of fact. <sighs> Go on, get things started. I'll clean up in here. You sure? Of course, babe. Okay. With the no eyebrow, something seems very off about him. At first, I thought maybe he was like, like ill or something, like he had cancer or something. I was blue, constantly. Okay, so is he the serial killer? My blue song, lovely happened to me. One second. Okay. Even when you hold my hand, there's a thrill more than I can stand. Lovely happened to me. Okay, so it was a fucking nut job then as well, then, yeah? But all serial killers fucking are, but you know what I mean? Like, he's. Probably thinks he's like a fucking demon or something. Unwanted by God, and now he's like fucking. Okay. So he's the one that Hood's gonna fuck up. <laughs> Basically. But the thing is though, it's like, like I said, if this girl's body turns up, of course, like, they, they're gonna have to let Hood go because it wasn't him, you know? Oh. Easy. You're welcome for saving your life. Only after I saved yours. Yeah, he wouldn't have even been in the situation if it wasn't for her. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I have to. No, that's bullshit. What am I supposed to do? Hide away from the world like you? No, you don't do what I do. You can leave. There's a whole world out there. The life that you're choosing, it ends one way. Maybe. But at least it's my choice. Crazy the thing out of all the fucking that Hood's done in this show, the one time he gets a girl pregnant. <laughs> Jesus. I think you did see her that night. I think she told you she was pregnant. Knowing you, you probably didn't take that news too well, so you argued. Maybe it turned violent, physically. No. Why is your blood in her car? I don't know. Why don't you ask Proctor? I'm asking you. Well, I don't remember. Well, if you remember. Cutting the hearts out of these two Jesus girls. Christ, come on, you know me. No, see, I don't. I don't know you. 
The only thing I know is that you went off the deep end when Siobhan was killed. You snapped, and maybe you're reenacting her death over and over and over again like some psychotic Jesus way. Christ. Open your fucking eyes, Brock! This didn't happen in the moment! Whoever did this shit took time to plan it! Think! What, you think I got that pregnant as well? Huh? Yeah. You fucking know it was! I don't know anything! Yeah, well, that about sums it up. I mean, it makes sense to go to that, like, that extreme of cutting someone's heart out and everything like it's planning, arranged, and... The pain is only psychological. <laughs> if you don't think that's what he needs, he needs to be somewhere safe where he can mentally and emotionally kind of come out of it himself but at the same time he does need somebody to help him and I think with him living with Carrie Carrie might be the one to bring him out of his his cell you know if that makes sense like it's kind of like we're, we're kind of seeing it now with them both being locked up in a way or am I just reaching <laughs> you got something for me I did I can wait no I need the distraction I like this, that like them two working together. It's the details of a drug processing and distribution facility. Proctors? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Bunker. Be careful, Mrs. Hopewell. <laughs> no. Get out of my way, Not Brock. Gonna Get out of my I'm the fucking man! I'm the fucking shit! Get out of the fucking way! You give me those keys, or I will shoot you. Wow. Wow. Everybody is so angry. Maybe you can't. What? Special Agent Veronica Dawson. Violent crimes. Yeah. That always seems to suck the air right out of the room. I take it you're Sheriff Lotus, and you are... Clyde Proctor. Mr. Proctor. Let's go, Proctor. I got Get this. your fucking hands off me! I got this, Sheriff. I can only imagine how frustrated you must be with how things have been handled, but this is my investigation now. And while I've got a little bit of lost time to make up for, I can assure you I'm a quick study and I plan to get to the bottom of things. Give me some time to sort things through, and as soon as I do, you'll be the first to know. I had no idea she was in this. It's like he doesn't care if, if, if Hood killed her or not, it's the fact that she was pregnant and with Hood's baby. I think that's why he was pissed. Like, are, are they in this together, or is she kind of like the crazy girlfriend that actually believes that he, he is a devil or a demon or something? And she's like his servant that she'll do anything he says, maybe. Or are they just both fucking nut jobs? Sheriff Lotus told me you don't talk much. He also told me about Deputy Kelly. You two were a couple at the time of her death. Losing a deputy and a lover in one fell swoop. That must have been tough. I've been there. My husband. He was leading a tactical operation. By the book, reach and arrest. He had the perp face down and zip tied. When in walks the guy's 13 year old nephew holding a Glock 9. Paul could have dropped him in a heartbeat. I mean, who can't outshoot a kid, right? But instead, he tried to talk him down. I guess that kid didn't feel like talking. He shot Paul in the neck. Killed him instantly. I'm thinking bullshit story. Just something just to get him to open. You've been doing this a while. <laughs> Long enough. Long enough to know that the fake husband's story is not going to work on someone like me. Like, why would you be so personal when open, like, straight from the get-go? He didn't do it. Really? 
You decided that in five minutes? No, I decided that in about two. The evidence... The evidence is shit, and you know it. The evidence isn't shit. I'll cut him loose. Not yet. Why? Because the minute we release him, it's gonna try to find Bowman's killer on his own. And I'd like a little bit of a head start. For the record, I also knew that your husband's story was bullshit. <laughs> okay, work. Yeah, I think she's watching Proctor, but that female cop is watching her. And because that female cop is in Proctor's pocket, you know that they they are definitely going to come like head to head at some point. Did you know that Proctor was in the drug business with your old crew? If I knew, I would have said something to you. But we need to take a step back and figure things out. This changes things. Not for me, it doesn't. Carrie. Carrie. Oh, okay, she's there. Yeah, she's definitely clocking on that there is. Okay. Why didn't you tell me? That's a nice transition, man. Nice cut type of thing. Honey, hold on. Job. The fuck? Is it Job or is it the female cop? Fuck, Job! <laughs> I almost shot you! Get enough firepower in here to start a war. Not start one. Just finish it. Wow. Is there multiple people? So what's he got like his own little cult? The fuck? You should really get some sleep. That would require me closing my eyes. It's gonna take time, Job. Fuck this, I'm coming with you. <laughs> You're not coming. Oh, you or nobody get to tell me what to do anymore. You are not leaving me in this motherfucking house alone. You don't, don't, don't leave me. You're staying in the car. You're gonna need someone to watch your back. You're gonna need somebody. Don't I'm look. serious. Fuck, you got me again. Oh, fucking hell, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, what the hell is this? Hey, this is private property. Who the fuck are you? Are you deaf, you stupid bitch? <laughs> no, I hear you loud and clear. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> one man fucking army. Well, one woman fucking army. <laughs> Oh, she trapped in there now. And he's not going to be able to go in and help her. Oh, shit. Ah! Look at that shot. <laughs> so how'd that go? My clockwork. <laughs> Luck is nothing. But... Clearly, Job shouldn't be back out in, in the field yet. You know? Only thing I can think of is staying with Sugar. Because Sugar's not actively going out doing stuff like him. Staying with him might be the better option. <coughs> FBI, skeezy fuckers.
Okay. Coroner estimated she was killed nine or ten hours ago, based on body temp and lividity. Cut isn't surgical, but it is precise. He's in a safe place when he does this. It takes his time. It's like what Hud said. It's like it's not like the spur of the moment. It's like it takes planning. What the fuck? It's nice to see you too, Calvin. And yes, I'd love to come inside. Well, I smell magpies cooking. How did you get out? <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. Uh. And who might you be? Uh, Hank, this is your grandfather. You just call me Papa, sweetheart. Uh, okay, we're gonna go up and take a bath now. <sighs> you know what? Fuck a man's heart. You want love? Go right to her stomach. Wow. Comes into your home, sits at your table, eating your food. Drinking your beer? Congratulations. You're not a serial killer. Because if Calvin was running things while he was locked up, now he's out, Calvin's not going to be in charge anymore. And he keeps trying to psych himself up like, I'm a man, I'm a man, I need to man up. But like, <sighs> he might become really dangerous now if he, if he feels like his power is going to be threatened. You know you kept me locked up. I just got here. Had to get my bearings. Well, I'm glad I could help. You knew I was innocent. I think innocent might be a bit of a stretch, don't you? Yeah, fuck you. Hey, you're welcome for that alibi, by the way. Look, Hood, I know where you live. It's a long walk to that cabin of yours. How long is it going to be until they fuck? I'm just putting it out there. You definitely need a drink. Knowing Hood, knowing this show, it's gonna happen. <laughs> and I'm guessing it'll be five by five. In him geist, in on Cause it was her fear that, that like she was saying to Kurt, because her fear about the kid, it was gonna like the hate and stuff was gonna pass on. Oh, oh man. Oh, it's just absolutely mental, man. I had no idea that Elijah Dusky was going to be in this show. Yeah, I think this guy is going to be a threat. can't think of his name. I know they've said it a few times, but I... I um, if he was running things while he was locked up and Calvin was kind of running things on the outside, now that he's out, is there going to be any need for Calvin? Calvin might feel threatened and pushed out. And like we've seen it like a few times now, like I said, that like Calvin keeps trying to tally himself to man up and be a man. And you, you know, if you need to keep tallying yourself to man up, I can actually see Calvin kind of lashing out or becoming more of a threat, especially if his father-in-law calls him a bitch, you know what I mean? Or, or, or tries to pull him in his place, especially in front of everybody, you, you know, the brotherhood or whatever they call it. You know it's shit's gonna hit the fan. I mean, this could magnify. Like she could actually go back to Kurt, you know, because like last time she was saying like w like you have to kill Calvin, but now it's like now that her father's out, it's just gonna like exacerbate the whole situation. I do think Kurt now is gonna have to instead of making moves in the background and ha and handing files to Kerry, I think he's gonna have to step forward, roll up his sleeves, and 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 get his hands dirty, you know. And as we get closer to it, like the end of the show, obviously, um, I can definitely see Kurt and Calvin going at it. Definitely. Ah, oh, but Job. Job just breaks my heart, man. But it's like I said at the end of the last episode, like if he was to show him sympathy, he would just turn around and say, fuck you, sympathy. I'm okay. You know, even though he's not, you know. But this is like the second episode in, in a row now. He fucking got me choked up. 
bastard, man. That, like, not wanting to be left alone. Like, dude. <laughs> but yeah, as far as the serial killer goes, I had no idea if it was going to go down this road of him being some fucking nut job with a cult. Thing is, though, it's like, as it's a cult, like, what type of cult is it? Like, are they all in it? Like, are they all worshipping and, and, and praying to, like, the same, like, demon or, or the devil or something? Is it all the same? Like, they're all in it together? It's just the one with the horns. He's just, he's like the priest of the group. Like, he's the main kind of follower. Or are they all there following him? Like, he has mentally and manipulated every single one of them to make them think that he is a demon in human form. You know what I mean? Because they could play it both ways. Because I'm just going on that first interaction we had with him and the woman and how it kind of seemed like, like I said, it seemed like a couple, you know, and, and she was kind of like, not catering to his knees, but like, it weren't like they're in it together. It was like she kind of put him up on a pedestal, if that makes sense. So I don't know, they could play it either way. Like, like he is just the kind of like the priest of like this little group and they all worship the same thing or they all worship him and he's the leader. But the problem with it being a cult is each member could have positions of power. You know, maybe there's somebody who works at the police force and that's why no one's been able to catch him yet because like they've got someone on the inside. You know what I mean? Um... It could be a lawyer, like, like who knows who these people are? They could be anybody, you know? So I am really intrigued with the rest of the show. I'm going to have to try and check out the next episode tomorrow, man, because I've literally run out of time today. Um, yeah, man. Um, yeah, if you're interested in watching the next two episodes, they are up on my Patreon right now, including all the full lengths for this whole entire show. Links are all down below, but for now... Give this video a thumb up if you like it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And subscribe if you haven't already, man. All right? I've been Sith Furion, and I'll catch you in the next one, man.